I'm going to show you at this point now, I'm going to uh, build this solution right next to the one that you just tried to do yourselves. Okay, so remember the key here, and I have the solution already up here, I'm not going to show you it yet, but the key here was to make sure that you have enough uh, information to make this pattern grow with the grid, right? So as I, basically it's reading, you know, the smallest value in this corner and the highest value in that corner, and then as it grows, it stays true to that rule set, right? Um, the only, I think, quantifiable one was this, and that needed to be um, half the, uh, the radius of that circle, the maximum, biggest circle, needed to be half the width of the grid cell, okay? So that's the only quantifiable rule. So anyway, let me get back down here. Um, the only thing that's going to throw you off here at first is that I'm starting off of a point that I put in space that's off to the side. Don't worry about that. Everything after the point is exactly like yours, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, first off, you need to create the rectangle, which you all know how to do at this point. Um, that's just under vector, grid, and you could do square or... Uh, uh, did I say rectangle? I meant grid. Um, you could do either square or rectangular, but I'm just going to do a square one. Okay, so in order to move this off the origin, that's why I put that point there. So that brought me over here. Um, then we need to create the sliders, which is simple. I just did 0 to 10s for all of them. Size of 4 is fine. And then extents kind of like that. Okay. Um, most of you got very close um, to figuring out how to patternize it. And it might have been confusing the way I explained it. Um, so basically what you wound up doing was uh, you successfully found the circle, the primitive circle under um, curve and primitive. That part was easy. And, and you also generally were, were smart enough here to grab the, um, the points and put the points in, right? So that, I think we did that a few times last week and, and every single one of you got that just fine. Um, the, the radius then was kind of the kicker, okay? So the, the fact that we're trying to make this not static, that it needs to be dynamic, is really hard. So <clears throat> um, what a number of us did is basically um, creating like a... Um, a set of radius, or sorry, let me go back here. Um, a lot of you were also pulling in um, constructing a domain, right? So I gave you the tool that you needed, which was range. Um, <clears throat> so that was under set, sequence, and range. Okay, so you had these, right? Range told you that you needed a domain and you created that domain. There were a few mistakes with domain where some of you um, just put a singular um, domain, like a slider. Um, what happens with that is that the domain automatically is going to assume that the singular number the sing the, um, that you feed it is going to be your maximum value, okay? So just be aware that when you put six into the domain, what it's really saying is zero to six. Okay, so anyway, um, <clears throat> what I did on mine was anything from uh, 0.25 feet to uh, a certain maximum number, and this is one that I, I don't know how very many of you that got this one, but that was, let's start off with, a, it could have been a slider or, whoops, sorry, could have been a slider or a panel, whatever you want to do with it, but 0.25 was my low value I just don't like to start from zero. Um, <clears throat> and then we need to set the, the high value. Now, theoretically, I know that my size of the grid cell is four, right? So half of that is two. And I could just make another one of these and call it two and then put it in. But then if I change my grid cell size, that's not going to be right anymore. So the idea here is that we're making it all intelligent data. So um, what I'm doing is I'm going to take the slider for the size and use a mathematical operator to divide it by two so that it will always change. Um, so I'll go to math and operators 
and division. And then I'm going to take one of these and make this divided by 2. Put that in there. And then take 4 and put it on the... Um, yeah. So then it'll, it'll be 2. And if I change the size of my grid cell to something much larger, that becomes um, an intelligent response and it'll give me 3.5 instead. Okay? So when I plug that in here, I get my range from 0.25 to 3.5. And, you know, if I contract or expand it, it'll stay true. <clears throat> Move that out. Oh, I had, that's the old one. Um, all right, so that kind of got me part of the way there. What's happening here is that the domain now, it, it has a proper domain. The numbers that it's generating are anywhere from 0.25 up to 3.5. Here's where it got more challenging. We need as many numbers as there are points. So I know I saw some of you trying out repeat data, which is on the right track, because um, it'll, it'll basically just repeat the information for as many times as you need it. The downside is it's going to keep going back to the 0.25 value and then cycling through this list. And it's not going to create a smooth growing radius across the pattern. So under the range um, component, the number of steps is really important. The number of steps determines how many numbers there are. And if our points, if the number of points that we have is constantly changing, we want to be intelligent about how we're reading and inputting that information. So um, we can basically read the length of this list by using list length. And that's found under set and list and list length. Um, you're going to see a problem here in a moment when I connect it. But basically, the, the points will plug in there. What you're going to get, is it's going to look like this right now um, with all the n equals 1s. Um, that means the number of value. And, well, don't worry about it yet. I'll explain it later. Anyway, uh, I plug that in to n, and this is what I get. And this is where most of us got to if we got this far. Um, we get um, separate lists of numbers that are going from um, 0.25 to 3.5, and each one of them is doing that. So when I plug this in to r you get this. And this is a variation of, you know, if you just plugged in the 10 numbers or if you just created radius values and plugged it in, this is what you would get. Each one of these columns is reading the same pattern. And then the last one, some of you had this, but the last one is a double, um, double radius on that one. So um, what we need to do is... Um, flatten this list so that the number of points being read isn't just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, so it'll read however many there are in the entire pattern. And then it'll feed that into the range to create a straight list of radius, uh, radius values. Okay, so that is found when you right click on the output. It's that hidden setting that changes this dashed line into a solid line, which means you don't have tree branches anymore, right? Branches of the data tree. You now have just one solid list of numbers ranging from 0.25 to 3.5 again. Making sense? All right, I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna walk you through it again and, and recap. But I have to finish my thought here first. Um, this last one has a double radius value because the range component is actually creating um, the n input is a number of steps, not number of values. So each step, right, has, has like a, a start point and an end point with a gap in between. That's the step. Um, so when you start stacking those up, it works just like the grid where it has an extra number. Um, that just needs to be reduced a little bit. So this list length actually needs to have a um, subtraction on it. So 
I'll just do a quick subtraction. So that's that, and it's going to be minus 1. That goes in there, this goes in here, and now you just have one of them at the top. Okay? <laughs> All right. So let me, let me recap for you, okay? Um, basically, the components that just about all of us had were the circle. Many of us had range, but maybe not. We might have just plugged it in with this or put in a domain, right? So the key is you all kind of had the right idea. It just mostly wasn't formatted correctly. Um, <coughs> the, so starting from the beginning, guys, the grid, you all got the grid. Is, that was fine. Then if you're trying to work backwards from the circle, right, the information you need is the radius, right? So in order to create numbers of radius values to plug in, I needed range, okay? And range requires a domain and a number of steps. The domain I created with a static low minimum, um, sorry, a low value, right? So the smallest radius it'll have. And then I read the size of the grid cell and I divided that in half to get that maximum radius value. If I didn't divide that in half and I did this, then they would grow to be too large. That's why I did that. Oops. Uh, what I break? Oh, shoot. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so let me go back here then. Um, so that took care of my, my minimum and maximum radius values, right? That was one of the rules I gave you. The other rule was that it had to be a pattern that grew from the minimum to the maximum all the way through the pattern. And that's what list length did. It intelligently read how many points were in the pattern so that I could feed that into the range um, component and that will tell me, uh, that will produce the same number of, of radius values that I could plug in. You guys kind of getting it? <laughs> I kind of get it, but tell the, um, the steps, so the, um, the range. It's, <laughs> that's, an, that's an important step. Um, yeah, range is kind of the crux upon which the, the assignment is built, really. You know, because, like, the circle is just the circle. That's just the geometry that's being produced. It could be anything. The importance of range is to stress that, or, or rather the reason that I put so much importance on it is, is so that I can stress to you how important it is to create relationships between your data, right? Because... If we, if we didn't use range here, and, and my pattern needed to change, basically I needed to make this smaller or larger, you know, whatever the case, all of my data input values that I statically put in there, even a, even a slider in this case is a static number, because it doesn't change when I change the origin of the grid. Um, <clears throat> but if then I would have to go back and, and change it all. I, I'd have to... Now that I changed my size to be larger, I'd have to go and change my maximum value for the radius to be larger. And then I'd have to change, if I changed how many, um, what the extents was, then I'd have to change how many numbers are being generated, right? So the key here is, is that this is reading information all, all based off of the grid. Ranges, all this stuff in between is just changing the way the data is being read. The real meat of it is this and this and that guy, okay? So you've got that one is very important. That's just creating the grid. This one is creating the circles afterwards. And then range right here is just reading more information and reformatting that information so that it can feed the right kind of information into the radius. Okay, so I don't really want to spend too much time on it. It's just um, 
I want you to understand why some of these definitions look like they're really complex. Um, it's, it's really an effort to make sure that, that you are creating geometry that's going to serve your purposes efficiently, if that makes any sense, right? Then things won't break and you can apply it really anywhere you want. Okay, and you know, probably like two to three weeks time, I think you'll fully understand why that's so important. Okay, questions? Yes? Uh, okay, I'll come check. Anybody else have a question? There, I thought somebody had a question over here. No? Okay, so um, we're gonna jump into something else here in a few, so just hang tight. Oh, yeah? Guys, uh, somebody's asking a question I can't really hear. Um, for list length? Yeah. Right. That's what list length is doing. It's just saying how many things are here. All right. <laughs> I'll come around and work on that with you.